Hey guys, welcome back. I shared with you a video a couple of weeks or maybe two, three months ago where I announced and prepared you for the journey of AI, uh, saying that ChatGPT will be able to take images in so you can, for example, after you fell down, you can send a photo of your hand and basically ask ChatGPT to analyze what's uh, what's wrong with your hand, really replace that first call to the doctor, or you can check if you really need to go to the hospitals and basically being able to communicate with so much more than just text to text of how we know these large language models to work. And until recently, uh, all of us really weren't able to play around or experience with these kind of uh, new technologies because Google, Meta and uh, OpenAI are all still working on it. And until GPT-5 comes out, uh, we will probably not know or some version of GPT-4, who knows? So I wanted to make this video to give you the opportunity to, to experience that right now because uh, there is something new that has just been released and uh, also maybe go over the basics a little bit so everyone knows what the heck I'm talking about and uh, how it will impact your life. So let's have a look. This is not a typo, okay? This is actually a multi-model model. The model stands for modality and modality just means like different versions, uh, versions of processes or methods, right? So multi-modal model is really referring to having different versions, different methods of using the, the AI, using the model, right? So um, if you compare the LLM, meaning large language model, that's what ChatGPT is, right? Essays and emails and reports and whatever in text format. And that gives you like a text and code and maybe a few graphs, depending on how advanced you want to take it. But most language models are just that text-based models that you can communicate with. And why this multimodal model, I still can't get used to pronouncing this right, is uh, such a game changer, to be honest. I, I don't like to use that word many t uh, very often, but it, it's very fitting here, is that we will move away from just text and go with text, audio, image, video, and probably even other things that can be combined, trained, and used as your prompt to get the result that you want, right? And going back to the example that I uh, mentioned in the beginning of like being able to upload your hand with your bruise on it to a model like this and saying like, hey, can you tell me if it's serious enough to go to a hospital or can I just put some ice on it? And uh, from a business perspective to like upload a very complex report and ask the model to explain it to you because you're stuck or you don't understand it, right? So the applications are really infinite. So before we jump into this and check it out, these multimodal models are again, like many companies are working on it. So you, you might have seen this on social media, Llama, it just stands for large language meta AI. So this means uh, this is the one that meta is working on the parent company of Facebook, etc. And then POM stands for Pathways Language Model. This is owned by Google or Google is working on it. I mean, and then there are other ones, right? So these are all not public yet. Google and Meta and the other guys are all talking about it on pretty much every single conference. So I'm looking forward to using them, but currently we can't. But luckily for us, there is something that just came out and it's called Lava. Uh, L-L-A-V-A, Large Language and Visual Assistance. And uh, you can access it here. And uh, let's just try this one time. All right, let's check out what Lava can do for us. And let's just start it very simple so everyone can follow, right? Um, so I uploaded this photo of this dude that looks um, quite stressed at work. Um, and let's just ask something like, is my employee happy and uh, it will just upload a picture and just keep giving a response based on this image it's difficult to determine the exact emotional state of the employee however the man is sitting at a desk with a laptop and a book uh, which suggests that he's likely engaged in work or studying while he might not be expressing happiness it's possible he's focused on his task okay that didn't work <laughs> that's that's not right 
Um, all right. Um, does he look stressed? Yes, the man appears to be stressed as he's leaning forward and rubbing his forehead, which could indicate that he's experienced some level of discomfort. <laughs> All right, so with some of help, we, we got there. But let's let's just try this one more time. Um, let's get some emotional pictures. Man, um, where were we? All right, let's go back and say, how about this gentleman? What mood is he in? And what's the weather? The gentleman in the image is in a suit and tie and he's standing on a balcony. The weather appears to be sunny and he's smiling and raising his arm in excitement. So, yeah, that's pretty sick. Okay, next let's try something a little bit more complex and uh, upload this graph here that has something about global sales of CDs, DVDs and game softwares in the 2000s, 2000 one etc and say so explain what's happening in here i don't know why i put a question mark there but all right um in the in the image there's a graph showing the sales of video games and cds over time what trend can you determine based on this graph Based on the graph, I can determine that increasing sales of video games over time while the sales of CDs have remained relatively stable. And this indicates that the video game industry has experienced growth in popularity while the demand of CDs has not seen the same level of growth, which is correct. CDs have stayed kind of the same, only uh, grew by a little bit. And the other ones are definitely growing by a faster rate. All right. So again, the reason I'm showing this to you is to kind of like make you understand how you could possibly use Lava right now. If you want, the link is in the description of this video. But, um, see which of the things that you keep explaining to others. Maybe if it's something personal, if you have some use cases for that, great. I mean, if you have maybe someone that is deaf or uh, cannot see properly in your family, uh, setting up something like that to basically check out the things that are in your fridge, right? And make a recipe out of the remaining um, ingredients or something like that. And I think especially on the business side, while most of us are here watching this, there are so many different use cases that I could think of, of uh, using a multi-model model, model <laughs> to, to get more efficient at what we do, right? Uh, to, to simply speed up, tasks that would take us many many hours explaining and re-explaining it to to multiple parties so i'm very excited to see what you guys do with this uh, let me know if you found some incredible ways of using this for your advantage and as always stay efficient and see you at the next one cheers